Brooklyn Independent Television. Hello, I'm Randy Piers. Welcome to Sector B, the business of Brooklyn on Brooklyn Independent Television. You just never know when you'll need a table saw or a waffle maker or an extra air mattress. But even if we could afford to own everything we might need, who's got the room to store it, especially in Brooklyn? You could ask your neighbors, but maybe you only know them to say hello. You can spend hours looking on Craigslist, but who's to say that that blowtorch will actually work when you go to pick it up? So if you're thinking new business model, someone else has already had that idea. They're in Dumbo. About a year ago, I wanted to grab a motorcycle to uh, take a little staycation in New York with my girlfriend and could not find a place to rent from. Wound up going on Craigslist uh, and asking for somebody to lend me a bike for a deposit and 125, 150 bucks a day. Um, got a bunch of responses and ironically, um, the gentleman that I wound up having the transaction with, his name was also Ron. He also went to my rival high school, Brooklyn Tech. I'm a Stuyvesant High School kid. Uh, so it seemed kind of faded from the beginning after we had this wonderful experience. I said to myself, wow, that was good, but how weird was it to take out a couple thousand dollars cash for deposit? How strange was it that I didn't necessarily know who this guy was? Um, how much easier would it have been if somebody had told me that he really was the owner of the bike? Uh, and at that point I decided that I should find out where the service was, and if it didn't exist, I should maybe think about building it. And I reached out to John uh, and said to John, I think this is interesting. He agreed, and a couple months later we got started. My focus has always been how technology intersects with the real world. And I like this because it was technology aiding yeah, the real world, quiet. aiding real things that we want to do. Snap Goods is local goods on demand. Uh, it gives people the ability to rent from other individuals and local businesses, the stuff that they need for a limited period of time, or the stuff they want to try before they buy. Go to snapgoods.com, click post your good, write the name for it, quick description, upload a picture, and you're pretty much done. You can specify whether something's rentable by the day, by the week, by the month. You set a, de a security deposit, uh, and you can also set a deposit if someone cancels on you in the last minute. I met a uh, Snapgoods username, Dan. Uh, and he told me how he had just lent his bread maker to a, another person in the city who he didn't know before, who's actually a professor that wanted to use the bread maker at, both to make bread and as sort of a point in discussion around use of technology for collaboration. What we're finding is that typically people set the rental fee to be somewhere between, let's call it two and sort of 10% at the top end. Well, I actually grabbed something to do a home project. I uh, made a new friend in Nick Hall, a user who lives in Fort Greene. It was a $400 uh, miter saw. And by spending the 20 bucks I spent, I got the project done perfectly. I saved myself 360 or $70. It's not a huge number, it's pretty significant since you and I both know that thing was just gonna sit in my apartment after that one time use. And so that then for us fomented a friendship, we had beers, I got other ideas because I wanted to go to his house and seeing the stuff he does around his house and now I'm building other stuff as a result of, of that interaction. I heard about it on the radio on WNYC I think and I checked it out and I was looking around to see if there were any cars to rent. I'm going upstate for the weekend. I would looked at other car rental places before and it's usually like over a hundred a day and it's sort of a hassle and it's just seemed easier just to deal directly with another person. There is a check engine light because it just never goes off. Okay. Like I took it in, it's been into the shop recently. So I shouldn't worry about that. So don't worry about it, yeah. <laughs> I heard about Snap Goods in the Brooklyn-based email, and I saw that someone was wanting a car, and I was just thinking about the things that I might want to borrow or that I might have to, to give out that somebody else would want. Uh-huh, jumper cables. My car's paid off, and I decided that I would be okay with lending it out because of that and I'm happy to help other people because I know that Zipcar can be very expensive and it's expensive to rent a car. And since I have this item and I don't need it all the time, I may as well share it. When I first got the initial reservation, it was a little, I had a sense of panic about it. Like, oh no, I'm gonna really have to give my keys to someone now. Um, but I'm feeling really comfortable about the way the site operates. Most of the profiles either have a photo or a link to a Facebook page or a Twitter feed or something like that and obviously link to a PayPal account so you know that you're dealing with some legitimate person who lives in New York City and you can trust that you're going to get your item back in good shape. 
it is very comforting to know that she drives for a living. She drives the Van Leeuwen ice cream truck. You start with you know, eBay and Craigslist, you know, early days sort of person-to-person -person commerce, taking the classifieds model, and then I think, you know, fast forward and you've got Netflix and Zipcar and we're starting to get more interesting about how we get access to things and creating an economy of access, a, a notion that I don't need to buy this thing in order to enjoy it. In fact, I don't want to buy every DVD I watch. I don't want to buy a car because I live in New York City. It seems to be the word at a point in human history where people are a little bit under excited about the excess of sort of the prior 20, 30, 50, 100 years. What I think we're getting at is when you actually add up all of the surplus of resources uh, and you make it all available, and there's awareness of where they are, who has them, uh, there's trust in the system. Well, now all of a sudden you can talk about resource surplus, accessible resource on demand surplus um, that's available to you and to me and to whoever sort of needs it. What uh, Mike's been working on is putting the finishing touches on uh, our first widget. What's really cool about uh, this widget is it enables uh, folks in our community who want to bring this functionality into their platform to totally customize the look and feel of it. Um, they can literally cut and paste this into their site. What we're really building here is access to goods and really experiences and human connection for people uh, in a novel way. That leverage is existing in your peer-to-peer -peer network, whether you know or don't know people, but also gives you access to sample products before you purchase. So when you think about the possible array of, of revenue streams, it's easy to see a situation where we take a piece of transaction. Uh, it's also easy to see that we become an interesting lead generation channel um, for some of these uh, retailers, marketers, and sellers of these good products. As a business that relies upon people interacting in the real world, I think it's doubly important for us to have a real world presence and to see people and have people see each other. We got this great email yesterday, uh, kind of running up to this event, and the email went something like this, Dear Ron, best of luck. Thanks so much for creating Snapbase. And it struck me that uh, really we should have written her back the email and said, without you guys, it's just code on a server and keys on a screen. With you guys, it's a community, it's people connected, making friends. In short, thank you for creating Snapbase. So, with that, have a great time. Thanks for coming. Become a fan on Facebook, like Brooklyn Independent Television.